you have to have an expert that helps you with this process. Today is a special video. We are back at TaylorMade The Kingdom. This is golf mecca, golf headquarters. Lincoln, when's the last time we've been to this place? We're back. We were here about two, two, three years ago, and it's one of the best places in golf. What are you looking to get done today? Uh, really just kind of go through the whole bag, uh, see what I need. I would like to try out some new irons and maybe some new driver shafts, so yeah, we'll see. Yeah, the last time we were here, Lincoln's club head speed was different, the way that he played golf was different, and the needs that he had was different. And so it's good every year or so for somebody that golfs as much as these junior golfers do to get themselves fit. So um, we do have a special treat. We are using one of the best fitters that TaylorMade has to offer and that the world has to offer. We'll introduce you to him, but first, let's go see where Tiger puts his bag. This first place you go when you go to the kingdom, uh, here is, you put your bag right here, they got your name. It's awesome, you put your bag to the Tigers. Uh, this trip's pretty cool. They got a bunch of really sick bags. Like, look at all of these. They have made four bags that they played in. TaylorMade does a really good job oh, okay. at making yeah. bags. Yeah. Like. You can tell, like, that one's the Masters. That one's the PGA Championship that they just barely had. I don't know about that one. Is that, is the Open from last year? I think it is. I don't know. No, I don't even know the brown one either. See the Tiger Woods bag that's here. Obviously, Tiger is not here right now, but I love that they do have his actual type of clubs that are here with the bag with his name on it. Let's introduce you to the person that is going to be doing the fitting today. Today's a pretty special one. We've got somebody that actually has their own YouTube channel and does YouTube videos, but also is a really good fitter. What's up? Here we go. We got <laughs> Karate Golf on YouTube, right? That's it, exactly. You can find me there, and hopefully you'll hear a lot of stuff about what we're gonna talk about today, but in more detail there. Any non-golfers out there, we're gonna look today at ball flight. We're gonna look at ball launch, we're gonna look at spin rate, descent angle, and peak height. Depending on how good you are at golf, dictates where we, the fitters, would put you, the players. So you're holding golf clubs there that are extremely what we would call spinny. So it means when you hit them into a flight, they almost stall in the air and then they come down very steep. So Tiger inherently is, well, historically one of the best, if not the best, iron player of all time. And the reason for that is, is these irons and how spinny they are in these things. Oh, sweet. If you take a look at that three iron, I'm gonna give you a seven iron. I mean, I just, I'm scared over the ball. With this, with these, these are really thin. It is that thin. You have to be a professional to use these clubs. Ooh. All right, so I'm really, really excited to sit back on the sidelines and watch this. We'll break some of it down and give you some of the insights that we find from Lincoln's swing. It's all gonna be out there. Think of Trotty as a doctor, and he's going to give us a prescription that fits Lincoln specifically, that is dialed in so that when he goes and plays golf, when he hits it good, when he has his miss hits, hopefully they're just a little bit better so that he can score a little bit lower this summer and do well. First room, you just want me to roll from here, boys? Just roll sure. from here. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, it's a little bit, I'll show you, maybe you like the, the, the real tour. So in here, as we've got a perfect weather day today, it's a bit cold, but it's perfect in air temperature. It's, we're at sea level, slightly into the prevailing wind for the afternoon. So I'm gonna do it all off a site. This is a simulation of our kingdom range, exactly the same. And they pick up data as to how the club's coming through. You must understand that with this, there's a bell curve to you, the golfer. You only have a certain number of great shots. So the best fitters in the world will move quickly and they'll get to what the root cause is quickly. So I don't want to start in here with you. Hopefully we don't need this room. I mean, if we can't get it done outside, then I shouldn't be doing this. So last time we were here two years ago, it was a weird time in the world. This room was closed off. Yeah. We weren't even allowed to come inside of this room. So this is the first time yeah. we've seen this. I didn't even know this room existed in here. It's a great room to loosen up. It's a great room to catch some data. Obviously, look, it's like an open kitchen here as well. This is always sweet. We've got different lost and lie things we could do. This is like a mini tour truck. And there's some cool devices that you wouldn't see, like bending blocks, for example, for metal woods. So we can bend loft and lie on metal woods. You can't really do that elsewhere. You can do it on the tour trucks, you can do it here. And then this is cool, it's a Dela Cruz loft and lie system. So our faces at TaylorMade, they have this cool technology on called their twist face. You can see here, it curves away in this section and it curves away in this section. It has a twisted face to it. If you strike the golf ball away from the toe or in the heel, for a right-handed golfer. The toe section is this part, the heel section is where the golf shaft comes in. 
Think about your foot, toe and heel. The toe strike will start right and the twist face will enable it to come back. It's all about center of gravity of the golf ball in relation to center of gravity of the club. Good players like Lincoln generally don't need that. Remember he's left-handed, so we're gonna get start left and go to the right. He's probably gonna do that on his own, but for golfers out there that need a bit of help, that's why this club is brilliant and sets up for that to help them get yardage. Other well, cool devices in here, this is key. Um, again, you wouldn't see this on the surface, but it's important we cover it. I've got two digital scales, and I've also got what's called a swing weight machine. It's a 14 inch fulcrum point from the butt of the golf club, and it gives me a letter and a number. It's crucial to any good player. Chuck's one of your golf clubs right now, any club that you quite like. So five iron, middle of the set, I don't mind that. This gives me a marker point to go off on the set. And you see how it's come out, D3.0. Quickly give you an example of how this changes it. So that weighs three grams. Let's have a little look here, how much that moves on our scale. And it goes up literally a full swing weight when you get three grams. But if I get my balance point wrong, this isn't gonna work the way we want it to work. So it's critical that this is right. The rest of it is all hot melt that can help us with central gravity location. This helps, these are curing cells. They dry the golf club really quickly. We have a certain uh, epoxy that will dry in two minutes, 45 seconds. So you've got all this stuff in here that if I need to make changes as I go through this, I can do it quickly. Forget doctor, we got a scientist. Very important, take some snacks if you want, your kingdom candy as well. Kingdom candy. Get some waters on here. Based on the conversations we were having, based on where you said you miss, which was short left. Yeah. So what I've done, I've added a degree of loft. So when we go into this and it's all done the opposite way around, and I changed it just before, but left. We're looking at loft and lie angle. So the lie angle is how the sole of the golf club interacts with the turf. We'll talk about it a bit more when we get out on the tee. And obviously loft is what's on the blade of the golf club. As we go for the lefty, it's coming in at 62 for a seven iron. So that would be standard if there is such a thing as standard. I hate using that term because it changes so much, but 62 is about standard, but I'm going to be keeping an eye on your left and right miss. Just behind there on the wall, you've got all these grips and they all come, obviously it's part of this end, but everything is a feel and it's your connection with the golf club. So we should never overlook that. You can go for more tacky and stuff that works better when it's hot. You can go for something that has something that be moisture absorbing. So today, like I say, let's be aware of that on a cooler day. That's good for practicing, good for hitting balls. But try to think as you go through. I'm gonna grab a track, man. There are a lot of top brands out there, but this one you practice with, right? Yeah. So you know, I assume your followers know about this we too. Got we got one of those in our garage. Yeah, it's a <laughs> so nice good. toy to have in the garage. <laughs> it is sure. nice. If you don't know what you're looking for as a player, this can be a really intimidating space. So it's a bit like going into a shoe shop and asking to try on a pair of every shoe in there. You just wouldn't do that, would you? Each club has a different bend profile and a different balance point. Two bags of balls. Um, we've got, I'll let you grab those. Yeah. I think we're on the top of that. Look at this. It's amazing. So pure. So nice. Perfect day out here too. Well. I want one of those Rolex clocks in my backyard someday. I'm gonna get one. Why don't you use a 60? Why 58? I don't know. I feel like I like playing like lower chip shops and I feel like 58 can just control it way more. 64 is the legal maximum loft right. you can play. But tall, no one really uses a 58. They're all right. on 60s. Okay. So the pitching wedge is 44. Right. And then, the, then you got a 50, yeah. Yeah, you probably want a 10 yard gap on everything. What are you aiming at? Where they're going? Yeah, that kind of middle, middle flag. So let's just get absolutely dialed because you've got a couple of, uh, and I'm not going to go deep. This is a club fitting, not a lesson. But you've got a couple of things and you can see our divots are going like straight away. So I want this blue stick, which is yours and you brought with you to get another great sign of a good player. I've got it literally going a foot left of the checkered red and black. So that's where that's going, which means when you get into that, and you set up that blade parallel left to it, that's gonna be great. The thing that I'm gonna call you out on, you're aiming a little bit right, left of it, sorry, for the left. Yeah. 
and then your arms, you've got a very straight left arm, soften it a bit because it's, I want everything to be a bit more nasty. Now that slight adjustment, meaning your, your shoulders and alignment's going that way, and your feet are going that way, which is why I think we're getting a contradiction with the divot. So just a couple of changes to alignment, and then just keep doing you, because you swing it beautiful, and then you'll get just rid of that slight divot that's going a different direction. Two different turf interactions now, right? Yeah. And anyone out there who plays golf, if you just have one of these alignment sticks and you get smart with it, it's so important. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. We got an NFL receiver over there. Really? Victor Cruz, I think is his name. Yeah. You know Victor Cruz? I do. That's him over there with the Jordans on. Yeah. And they got fancy, way fancier cameras than what we have. Is that a conscious decision today to match the shoes with the? Yeah, uh, I forgot I brought these. You just, look, you just, look, you're looking beautiful. <laughs> your left arm gets very straight on top because I think the grip is so thin yeah. that it's easy for you to get your big paws sort of wrapped over that thing. That's, so that's going to help you a little bit because that's got to be a change we make. We're getting inconsistent flights, right? Some of them are high, some of them are low. This is one of the things I've loved so far about the fitting. We're like 10 minutes into it is that he just now turned on the track man and he's done a ton of analysis based just off of the sound of the contact of the ball, the way that his alignment is and the way that he's watching the divots. Sometimes you go to a fitter and they rely solely on the data, which people are different in the way they operate. He's going to use the data, but I love how much he's able to get out of it just by watching. I want your launch, if you're a decent player, I'm looking at launch, spin, peak, attack angle, how you how you hit it. The launch on that, 14.6. If it's 31 loft, I want you to launch it at half that. So 14.6 is good. Pretty good. That means for a player, you are compressing the golf ball well. Get, hitting a good golf shot is about squeezing the ball between the turf and getting it out. If we look at these, these are good. The two shots you've hit, have gone a little bit to the left. So I'm looking to see if this is a hair on that side, which would be toe side from explaining earlier, rather than heel, but they're not. And I also know, because I measured that club earlier, I also know that I've put them one degree upright. Now, lengthwise, we've gone what would be deemed as standard. I yeah. think there's room to go quarter inch longer. I wouldn't then move the lie angle because dynamically, you then make the clubs a little different lie angle. So I'm good with where that is. But the main call out as I look at these three golf shots that you've hit, all right, you didn't hit the first one with yours, great. But this is the game changer. If we have a look at your spin rate on that first golf shot, 4,700 with a six iron. With this one? Your right. own, yeah, this yeah. one. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, for sure. Shocking. Yeah, like, it's awful. Yeah, well, it needs to change. Yeah, <laughs> it needs to change. But, <laughs> but, totally agree. Remember I told you, Tiger uses spinny grooves, spinny ball. He wants maximum spin, best iron player in the game. Right. You upped it on two shots to 7,200 revolutions a minute and then 7,100 I mean, revolutions. That's a lot, yeah. And then you got your peak height up. You actually hit the, sh the clubs a little bit shorter, but your descent angle became steeper because of the spin. So the way in which it gets there, I'm not worried about distance with you because you got plenty of speed. I want it control. I want it up, spinny and down. Now that might be a bit too spinny. We've got to look at a couple more and then we'll get into the other bag of golf balls. Yeah. But that spinny height is what we want. That's really good. If you stand straight up and then put their long arms, that's coming into the middle of your your leg there, that's a long yeah. arm. So that's probably, you know, we don't want it any longer than half inch. Because again, you change the balance point, which means you change the feel of the golf club. Don't want to do that. That's the one I like, little toey on the strike, you can tell by the sound, but 14.7 on the launch. Okay, so that's decent. Club path, 0.2. So that means you hit 0.2 that way out, so it's zero basically, brilliant. So that gave you a launch of 13.5, 14.2. That's where it should be. So when you take the number on the bottom of the club, which is a six iron, you multiply it by a thousand. Maximum you can do is add 500. So you'd hit that 6,500 spin. Peak height 79, descent angle 47 degrees. That thing's going to stop in a green. 
So let's hit some of these. Um, look, yeah, length, it feels long. Yeah. I don't know. Let, let's hit some and let's have a look at how it performs for you. What are your thoughts on a long driver, driver no. shaft? No, don't no. like it at all. Don't like it at all? No. <laughs> Not unless it's like, if you're a long drive guy and that's what you want to do, fine. I just think over the course of a four round tournament, difficult to use. I like heavy drivers, but heavy yeah. in the head, because that gives you more speed. So I've got you going at that <laughs> red flag at the end. I, I really think, you, yeah, you need to just soften that into the rib cage, that. Because it's just really killing you on everything. You're hitting low launch. Much better, much, much better. If you can hit things higher in the blade, you'll get your launch up and your spin rate down. High is what you need to be thinking. Much better, that's great. If you get that below it, then you're gonna get high launch, low spin. If you get out the bottom at all, you just get low launch, high spin, and it kills you. You lose yardage. They're going good, ball flight's way, way better. So he's handing you irons with different club heads, different shafts, different lengths, I mean, and then you're testing them out. Yeah. Trotty has had a bunch of good ideas. He seems to know what's going on. I am kind of lost sometimes in some of the data, but I love hearing an expert talk to Lincoln. He's given him different club heads, different club lengths, different weights, different grips, and different lie angles, and he's testing out things, and he feels like he's got a pretty good idea and now we've moved on to the driver. And Lincoln hit his driver a few times, and now he's getting him a different shaft and a different driver head just to test something else out here. So I'm glad Lincoln plays golf like every day because this is the point when a normal everyday golfer, like weekend warrior, you might want to call him, starts getting really tired and maybe they get fit for something that doesn't work for their swing. But Lincoln hits so many golf balls that he's strong enough that he can do this. If you're somebody that's gonna go get fitted somewhere, Make sure that uh, you don't go hit like buckets of balls before you go, because you are gonna swing quite a few golf balls on the range and you wanna make sure your body's ready to go so that you do get the right thing for your swing speed and everything. If you're playing a firm desert course or a mountain course, then you'd have a very firm lie, right? Yeah. So if you're on a desert course and you move the ball back and put the handle forward, then you can get the strike you need. I, I wouldn't be worried if you hit the turf there. Because the bounce will do do its job then. Great. Just off. Go to a longer one. Fantastic. You got the 60 degree wedge there. Perfect. If we then put you into grass that's more like this, now you can see if you put the club behind it, it sinks into the grass. Yeah. And it's gonna give back everything you give it. So you can hear it, right? Yeah. Really good. So I'm surprised you've got wedges with a very thin flange, very thin, thin sole, and not much bounce. And I kind of think if you get into something like this, everything you can hear, and look at the grass, look at where the ball was there, you entered there, ball was there, you entered that, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Exactly, see there's no golf ball that's been harmed in that golf shot. Yeah. Beautiful, it's ideal. And you've struck it, like back it. yeah. You can tell straight yeah. away with the sound and the way you're hitting them. Brilliant. I mean, that's a good demonstration of, uh, this is just a case of you do you now and hit different flights if you want to, but I wouldn't suggest anything else. Good. It's good, your short game's good then. You can tell you got a decent short game. How nice does that sound? You can tell that you spend a lot of time chipping. Yeah. Yeah, my horse shut down the range about a year and a half ago. So I just got a really nice big putting green. So I just usually sit around there. I'll build the set off what you've got. We'll get you in to look at the putter, but yeah, for me, I, I think you're pretty, you got a good yeah, set. You got to go half inch longer. You got to go one degree up. Yeah. Go the 120 KBS morning tapers. I really like that five wood and those iron. Whew, okay, we've been here for a few hours and it's been awesome. We've got a player here who's going through a transitional period. The set he has, not that there's anything wrong with that fit when you got it, but you're at a stage where your game is good and you can actually see from the turf here, 
divots are consistent. We hit a lot more balls than what I would normally see because we're making a lot of changes. Quite often when you get a player here, I'm not going to make this many changes. So we went half an inch longer than what would be deemed as standard. Hopefully you pick up that. I don't love standard, but half inch longer than what industry deems as standard. Yeah. Then we went more upright, which brought your ball flight back from losing it to the left, Lower. which meant when you got here, you said short left was the problem. That's gone. Yeah, We've resolved sure. that. Over the next three or four years, these clubs now, depending on how often you change, but they're going to be staged to get you to that space. Wedges was an easy go in. We're going to go with the chrome finish on these mill grind threes. Standard bounce. That was quite interesting what we talked about. Awesome chipper. Very good. Anyone out there watching golf who wants to get good at chipping, like this is how you chip. Very good. <laughs> Thought it was fantastic. Okay. I will say with the driver, it really threw me off a little bit, which is why we're probably here a little longer than what I want it to be. Um, uses a longer than standard again if we have to use that for term golf shaft when you use a longer lever as i mentioned at the top i don't love that but someone of your ability is able to keep it very straight it's not for the normal player for you you can get away with it yeah. three and five wood we then put us the fall in guys to go in there very good golf shafts very good very high industry golf shafts in those and it's just like your staple diet. It hits a nice three wood, nice five wood, hits yeah. his yardage. I've never had gone. five wood before. That's something I've kind of always wanted to try it out. Great. It did great. It did great. It worked great. So, as you alluded to, the height was up, spin was good, numbers were good. Big one, we changed the golf ball as well. You went to a less spinny golf ball, yeah. which in the way you hit it works out pretty good. That's something you'll have to monitor over the next year or so. Welcome back here anytime to get checked and dialed in. But yeah, game's in a good place. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is great. Okay, thoughts on fitting, Lincoln, on your side. It was great. I have, I've had a lot of doubts with my irons over the last like six months. I think that's a big reason why it's been tough to really score and go super low, um, just because my irons are just super inconsistent on par threes. But my ball flight with irons was just super ideal. Like I could feel the contact, contact was great, and the ball flight was just, it's what I want. So. No, I'm I'm really happy with what we've done here. It's it's been a great day. I'm I'm happy to be here. This place is great. So when we came here two and a half years ago, it was at a weird time in the world where ships were not coming across the ocean. There were supply issues, and then all of a sudden, as soon as the world shut down, companies like TaylorMade thought, well, we better shut down our supply a little bit because who's going to be buying things? And it turned out the opposite thing happened. Golf was one of the only sports that people could play in the entire world because it was outside. And so the demand went higher than it's ever been. And so when we came here last time, I think it took two or three months to get our actual custom clubs that are fit here. Now it's gonna take anywhere from 24 hours to three or four days, really? most likely, depending on the shafts oh, and depending wow. on how it is. But That's awesome. um, we talked to our friends at TaylorMade and they may even have the tour team, if they have the stuff inside of here, get it turned around and get it to us in 24 hours. <laughs> That's amazing. So super, super lucky because Lincoln does have a lot of tournaments coming up. Should have done this a few months ago before we're right in the middle of the season, but hey, no, I'm, I'm so great to here. Just wait, just wait. I'm confident, confident. with these. It's gonna yep. be great. The strike changed massively. And again, it, it's someone using a set of irons that it, it's just not right for you. Yeah. Not that the irons are wrong, just the setup's not right. And that really shows you what this is all about. I think if you can come, if you can get a fitting, if you're lucky enough to get it here at the Kingdom in Carlsbad, fantastic. But there's a lot of information you gotta go through. You gotta be honest with yourself. Try not to maybe hit as many balls as we hit today, but I got a young guy, he's got plenty of strength, no <laughs> problems. And if you want to learn more about all aspects of the golf game, you can check out Trotty Golf on Instagram. Does some really good Instagram videos and then also on YouTube. He's got podcasts with all of the greats, with Rory, with Tiger, but also a lot of lessons like which ball should you use, which type of club you should use. A lot of the things that he taught Lincoln today that were specific to him, he talks about those things on his YouTube channel. So a lot more in depth than what we will give you, but we'll put a link in the description. You can check that out. And thank you to TaylorMade for letting us come out here today and get fitted. What an experience. Yeah. I'm excited to thank watch some golf this summer. You've actually fit a lot of pros. You've been on tour for a long time. Yeah. Fitting them, right? 16 years, yeah. 16 years That's fitting pros. Time. That's why you don't grow much taller than this, because you spend so long in airplanes. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> airplanes, tour buses. Real good. Can you pick this up? Uh, I mean, no, we can leave them. Yeah.